so we just finished up putting the block together. We got our rods torqued and assembled. So we're gonna go ahead now and dress the block. We're gonna start with the oil pump, rear main plate, and then we'll install the brace. We gotta start first here with the oil pump prep. Um, for this build, we're just doing the standard N1 oil pump with a set of Rymax billet gears. Uh, so the first step for this is basically we're gonna be removing and disassembling everything. We're gonna port the pump, and then we're gonna go ahead and install our gears, check our clearances, and then install it to the block. And then we'll show you uh, how to do that properly. And then once that's done, we can install our front main seal. So now that we've got the back panel off, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove the pressure relief valve. Um, the back panel can be kind of annoying sometimes. These bolts are, are quite tight. Um, so what we usually do is we either use a uh, Phillips um, bit with a ratchet so you can get enough leverage. Uh, if that doesn't work, we use one of these, um, which basically lets you hit it with a hammer while putting down force and then turns the bolt. Um, so you can end up with uh, an easy removal process instead of fighting with it or ruining the screw. So now that we have this off, take our gears out. We're gonna punch the front main out. We're gonna have to do some measuring so that can't be in there. Unfortunately, um, you can't reuse it. Um, you could try and reuse it, but I don't recommend it. Usually you've dented enough to, to pretty much throw it in the bin. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna remove the pressure relief valve and then punch out the front main. Next up, we're gonna be porting this oil pump here. Um, it's pretty much just a mild port. All you're doing is just rounding out sharp edges um, for exits and entrances. Um, it's pretty straightforward, so what we'll be doing is just down in here. We'll be smoothing this out, making it more smooth to enter. And then in here, on the pickup side, we'll be smoothing this out so it's a little bit smoother to exit, as well as inside this porthole here. Right inside here, this area in the back side can be ported quite nicely. So same with this side here uh, on the exit. You're gonna want to smooth the inside of this hole. Same thing when it's drilled this way and drilled this way, it's a very sharp edge. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna curve it just so it's smoother for the oil to come out. Now, while you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to be careful of all of the surfaces in here, any sealing surface, this surface here, here. Don't nick it with the tool. Um, if you do plan on doing this yourself, uh, just be careful. It's easy to grab the metal and come over and ruin your oil pump. So uh, what we'll be doing is I'll just show you kind of a during and after, and then we'll talk about it when I'm finished. Okay, so now that we have gone ahead and ported the in inlets uh, and the outlets, go ahead and take a look in here. Basically just rounded the edges so it's a smooth exit. Um, I start with the rounded tip bit, that way I can kind of get in here at a 90 and get it round and smooth. Same with down in here. And then move on to here, same thing, a little bit of a smaller hole, but same, same idea. Same with down in here. Easy to get around the corner with this back edge with the rounded bit and smooth out the corner. You can actually see almost at a 45 degree angle now the light all the way through to here. Um, and then I go ahead and I finish up with the tip one or the pointy tip one. That way I can get right into the corners, smooth out the corners on each side and create a, a nice smooth flowing surface. Um, if you look at Tomei or any other uh, uh, higher end oil pump, they do this after they do their casting. Um, so we're basically just taking a Nissan product, making it a little bit better making it flow a little bit better, um, reducing any sort of restrictions, um, and then creating just a bit of a better product with what we're using here. Um, so next we're just gonna clean this up. We're gonna go ahead and install our uh, Rymax oil pump gears, and then check our clearances on those. Okay, so next up we're gonna take our Rymax billet oil pump gears and we're just going to dry fit them here first. We're going to check our clearances. Um, I've never had an issue. Uh, usually if you put the oil pumps, uh, oil pump gears in, they spin freely. You won't have any binding issues. Um, because aluminum grows two times faster than any sort of steel, um, you're, not, you're not really going to have any sort of growth binding issues. So if it does fit and doesn't bind, usually you're going to be okay. Um, we're going to go ahead, we're going to measure our clearances just to be absolutely certain. 
So I'll put the center gear in. Um, if you don't already know on an RB or most oil pumps, there is an upward indicator. Um, and up will be from the back facing up, not from the front facing down. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna place both of our gears in here with the indication mark facing up. Just a dry fit. Make sure you have no, sorts of, no sort of binding or anything like that before we start measuring. And we're spinning freely. It's looking good so far. These two alignment points don't need to be aligned when you put the gears in. It's um, hunting, I think it's called, so the gears don't ever actually meet in the same spot every rotation. So if you spin it once, it moves over one, and then if you spin it again, it moves over another one, so it doesn't ever repeat in the same location. So don't, don't be concerned about lining those up when you install it, just faces up. Um, so we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna check our clearances. Okay, so the first clearance we're gonna check on these gears, uh, our gear, outer gear to housing clearance. Um, minimum spec is four and a half, we don't have four and a half, we have five, so we're gonna go with the five. Make sure we have clearance in there, which we do. Checking a couple locations. Again, there isn't any binding in here. So I would be comfortable with running these gears just based on that. But we should always check. Just be careful, make sure you hold the gear down when you go to pull it out, otherwise it does get stuck. Um, our next thing we're gonna be checking is gonna be the inner gear to outer gear um, between the two teeth. Okay, so for this one, the gear inner to outer clearance maximum of seven one thou. Uh, or 7.0071 thou. Um, so we're just gonna pull out our seventh thou gear, make sure it doesn't fit in there, and we're gonna be okay on that specification. The maximum clearance tolerance is basically just gonna be making sure you don't have too tight of a clearance so when these do grow into each other, they don't end up binding or, or hitting each other. Um, the next clearance we're gonna be checking is gonna be for the front cover or the back cover, however you want to look at it. Okay, so for the housing clearances, uh, we're going to be looking for a minimum of two thou. I have two and a half here. So I'm expecting to land right in the middle there. Put that in there. So we're going to be checking the both of them at the same time here. So we're going to push the cover down, make sure that our feeler blade moves freely in there so you don't have too much um, contact or binding. Remember when we free checked the, uh, the gears earlier, we didn't have the back cover on. So now we can go ahead, now that we've checked the outer gear, even though they're both in there, take the inner one out. And we can do the same thing again. Put this in there before we put the cover down. Okay, put the cover down in the position it's in. Get it onto the gear. And then again, make sure you have clearance between the gear and the back cover, which minimum two thou, we have two and a half. So we should be okay there. Okay, so our last clearance we're gonna be checking is the uh, oil pump gear inner to the housing. This one's gonna be a little bit more critical so you don't get too much walking or movement of the gear inside the housing. It doesn't come bashing into this one and pushing it into the outside. Um, so our minimum clearance is gonna be uh, 0.0018 thou. Uh, we're gonna start with a two. Um, that's the smallest one we have with a minimum spec. We're just gonna to wanna to make sure we have the minimum spec clearance. So we're at two thou right now. Maximum allowable clearance is gonna be four thou or just under. So we'll go ahead and we'll check our maximum now. Okay, now that we have our maximum feeler blade, this one we're probably not gonna wanna have any clearance, we want it to be a little bit tight. Yeah, so we're not able to push that one into that gap. So we're gonna be under the maximum. We felt about 2,000 there with the other feeler blade. So that's gonna be a good clearance setup for all four clearances. Okay, so now that we've verified all of our clearances, we can go ahead, we can put some assembly lube onto the gears, put them into the housing, reassemble the housing, um, put our oil pressure relief valve in, and then we're gonna be Loctite in the rear bolts on, so we'll show you a little bit more on that. Okay, so now that you have your gears installed with your assembly lube, just make sure again, both marks are facing up. Again, they don't have to align or anything like that, so just make sure, just do one final spin check. You'll feel a little more resistance now that it has uh, oil in there because it is a pump and it's gonna create pressure in between each tooth. It's gonna squeeze the oil out. So don't don't feel concerned if it suddenly has, uh, I guess, um, 
don't feel concerned if it suddenly has any binding issues. That's why we dry fit so we don't have any sort of misleading false positives or negatives. Okay, so once we have that on there, there's a little bit of assembly lube on the back side, just in the areas where it's going to be contacting. Now we can go ahead and we're going to install our rear plate. Okay, so now we have our back cover on. We're going to be using red Loctite on these bolts. Um, if you have any experience with the RBs, you know that these bolts love to back out over time. Not sure why. Well, obviously, they are under torqued from factory, um, probably to start, and they don't have any sort of locking um, thread sealer or anything like that on them from the OEM. So we're going to go ahead. We're just going to put some red Loctite on here, just a little bit. I like to spread it out just so you don't end up with it on the flange. Make a mess for yourself. Go ahead and you can just put it down hand tight. Once you have your back plate on, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to quickly install the pressure relief valve. So again, assembly lube. Place it into the oil pump. I like to lubricate the, the spring a little bit, just both ends, just for startup. That first startup always has the uh, highest oil pressure, so you're going to want to make sure that there's lubrication everywhere, a little bit of oil everywhere. And then we're just going to hand tighten this little plug in here. On other jobs or oil pumps, you can shim the uh, spring to be tighter and have a higher relief valve pressure. Um, but for the sake of this build, we're going to just leave it at the OEM setting, um, which is already quite high. It also depends on your oil clearances, um, but with our oil clearances, the factory setting is going to be just fine. Okay, so for the oil pump bolt torque specification, factory is 2.7 to 3.7. Um, again, we talked about this, not high enough. Um, so I like to take these out to about 5 foot-pounds and then just make sure they're not going to come out. I've never had an issue with that torque rating. Um, I've actually had to take one apart afterwards and uh, swearing at it and, and yelling at it because I couldn't get them out, but that's what we want. We don't want the welcome to fall apart because this is a known issue. We want to remedy the issue and we can always drill them out and replace them if we have to in the future. And then now for this pressure relief valve bolt, torque spec is going to be 29 to 51. I like to go on the higher side because we again, we don't want this thing to come apart if this comes out no oil pressure and your engine fails. So we're going to go ahead and go to 50. Just going to tighten that the rest of the way in. Take it all the way up to 50. And then once you've got them torqued, we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint pen. As you torque them all down, you can go ahead and just paint pen them again. This is just so you know that you've done it. And if you have a uh, uh, reflection later, oh, hey, did I tighten those down? You can just come and look. Be like, yep, I torqued them down. and walk away, peace of mind. So now that we have it fully assembled, we can go ahead, we can just check our gear, make sure again we have movement in there. We've already dry fit this. We've already measured the clearances. So this is just a last, last, last check. And then we confirm that's good to go. And we can go ahead and we can start talking about fitting this to the block. Okay, so in a previous video, I'm fairly certain we talked about removing the oil pump dowels. That's already done on this block. So what you're going to want to do is grab a pair of vice grips, remove your oil pump dowels. Um, there's two ways to do this. This is the easiest way to do this. Uh, this is a uh, oil pump centering ring from PRP. Your main concern with this oil pump is centering on the crankshaft and nothing else. Um, I don't care how it fits on the block as long as it's centered on the crankshaft. The oil holes will line up still if they're off a few millimeters. Not a huge deal. You're not going to move much here. But the critical, critical component here is oil pump to crankshaft drive alignment. That pretty much guarantees success for oil pump drive and having no issues with the oil pump cracking, uh, the oil pump gears cracking. Um, I've had success centering OEM oil pump rings or oil pump gears and having no issue. Um, so the primary issue is usually alignment slightly off heat expansion causes it to bind up and that's what cracks them along with other reasons but that usually is what will lead to failure so our primary concern is always going to be centering the oil pump to the crankshaft so this ring fits inside the oil pump nicely you want to make sure your oil pump drive is aligned 
In this case, we're at pretty much 90 degrees, so we're gonna put the well pump gear at 90 degrees. Just to get started, find our alignment. Make sure your gear is in, make sure your alignment tool is in. And then now your secondary concern after the oil pump to crankshaft alignment is gonna be oil pump to oil pan flange levelness. So your secondary concern, like I just mentioned, is gonna be this area here. You're gonna want your pump to be as level as possible. Obviously you don't want it to be like that or that. Um, you can do a little bit and not notice, um, depending on how much slop you have in the bolts themselves. So without the dowels, there's a bunch of movement in here. Um, so again, you're gonna have to do this one by feel. You can bolt on or place on the brace if you wanted to, uh, but this is not a critical position. So you're just gonna wanna make sure that this is level before you tighten this down. Again, your centering tool is gonna be doing all the work for you to the crankshaft. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pop the seal in the back of this now or the gasket in the back, and then we'll center it up and we'll tighten it down. Okay, so we got our alignment ring on there. We have our bolts in here, but you can see there's slop in here. So you're gonna to wanna to level off the oil pump base to the block, make sure these areas are flat. We already know our oil pump is centered to our crankshaft base from the ring. So go ahead and make sure it's level, and then we're gonna tighten down one side at a time. Just hand tight, see if it's still flat. Looks good, this is not a critical measurement, so you could go ahead, you could take a straight edge. You can measure if you wanted to to see. Uh, it's not critical. You can basically feel if it's flat. This block has been surfaced again, and it has been aligned honed. So the oil pump location will have raised in the block. Usually when you center to the crankshaft, the oil pump will offset the same amount because you've moved it all up in the block. So I'll just make sure it's flat and then we can go ahead. We can torque the rest of them down. We're gonna just double check our ring here. Yeah, our ring is still seated, pressured all the way in, centered. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll tighten down the rest. You can just go hand tight for now and then we'll torque them down. Make sure they're flat once you have them all hand tight. Okay, so the torque spec on this oil pump here is gonna be 6.7 to 8.7. Again, I like to go on the higher end of the torque specification, so I do like to take it up to at least eight. Um, if it feels okay, you might be able to take it to nine. So we'll go ahead, we're just gonna start at the middle of the top. Take it right up to eight. These are brand new bolts, so you might be able to take it out to that nine foot pound mark. The longer ones may not take as much torque because they are longer. There is no torque pattern for these, but I do like to spread it out a little bit. Make sure you got them all down. And then once you have them all torqued, again, with the paint pen, so if you come back later and you're wondering if you torqued them, you know you did. Okay, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the centering ring. This can sometimes be a little bit tricky once you have it torqued down. So now that we have our oil pump on with our oil pump gears in there. Uh, I like to do a couple of checks just to make sure the oil pump gears are actually spinning freely while they're in there. Um, so I like to take a pick, just push on the flat spot of the oil pump gear and make sure that it rotates. As you can see there, there's gonna be a little bit of slop in there and it's even so you know it's gonna be exactly how you want it in the middle. Okay, so now that we know we have a little bit of slop in there, I'm just gonna rotate the crankshaft 90 degrees. Okay, so now that we have the crankshaft at 90 degrees from where it was, we're just gonna do the same check. Make sure the gear moves. Now that we know the gear has moved in two different locations, we can go ahead, we can feeler blade it. We're just gonna make sure our clearance is square for all four corners. Okay, so now that we have our oil pump installed, we use the center ring to install it. We check to make sure the gear moved in two, two positions. Now we're just gonna do a third check, just make sure we have a good clearance on it. Um, we've measured seven thou clearance on the flat spots in the left and right position. So what that means is we basically have taken a feeler blade, we've fed it inside of here on the flat spots on the one side, 
and then we've checked the measurement on the other side. And we've concerned we have seventh out on each side of this here as well, so we know it's centered left to right. And then we'll put it at a 90 degrees up and down position. Do the same check. Remember when you turn it, the gear is going to move inside of the crankshaft, so you'll have to get it square again. So at the 90 degree position, at the 90 degree position, we have clearance again on the top, and then at the bottom. So in doing this check, we know that we have 7 thou, top, bottom, left, right, center of the crankshaft, center of the oil pump. We know we have even clearance all the way around it. Um, so this pretty much eliminates uh, the chance of any gear binding from that oil pump being too low, too high. Um, or since we've done so much machine work to this block, we've moved the crank center line down or up in the block, whichever way you're looking at it, um, which moves the oil pump alignment um, significantly. So we need to make sure that we recenter the pump to the crankshaft and not to the block. Um, so now we're going to go ahead, we'll move on to the rear main plate. <laughs>